Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil kareem. All praise and thanks is due to Allah and blessings upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed shaytan. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. وَحْلُلْ أُقْدَةً مِّلْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ O my Lord, expand for me my chest and ease for me my task and untie the knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech. Surah Taha, Ayats number 25 to 28 Verily, all praise is for Allah. We praise Him and we seek His assistance and we ask for His forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. Whoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead Him astray and whoever is led astray, there is no guide for Him. I bear witness that there is no deity that has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone with no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We begin Juz 14. Juz 14 begins with ayat number 2 of Surah Hijr. The Surah Hijr is um, Surah number 15 which goes up to um, ayat number 99. That's the completion of the surah. And then we begin a new surah in this uh, para, in this juz, juz number 14, the B, an nahal And uh, this surah is, um, has 128 ayats. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to learn the lessons from these beautiful surahs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to obey his commandments. Ameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب وقرآن مبين ربما يود الذين كفروا لو كانوا مسلمين ذرهم يأكلوا ويتمتعوا ويلهم الأمل فسوف يعلم وما أهلكنا من قرية إلا ولها كتاب معلوم ما تسبق من أمة أجلها وما يستأخرون Ayat number two Perhaps those who disbelieved will wish that they had been Muslims So people who are not Muslims when the Muslims flourish in this, in this world and when good things happen to the Muslims, they could be wanting to be Muslims at that time. Or when, they, when, when, they, uh, when people die, non-believers die, they realize that they ran after the dunya. And when they'll be asked questions, they will realize that they should have accepted Islam. Or it could be also um, that in, in the grave, when a glimpse of hell will be seen or a glimpse of heaven, and they would wish that they would be the ones going to heaven. And they will also uh, wish that they were Muslims at the time when the Muslims will be taken out of hell for after the punishment that they would be given if they were, were uh, sinners. So there are many different time, times that the, um, people would have wanted to be, uh, wish that they were Muslims. And so we, uh, you know, May Allah make us of those who are true Muslims in this world, inshallah, true believers, true moments. Inshallah, ayat number three, leave them to eat and enjoy. Let false hope divert them, then soon they will come to know. Ayat number four, and we did not destroy any town, but there was a known decree for it. Nations were given time, 
a particular time to improve and then they were destroyed if they did not follow. No nation can advance its term, nor can they delay it. And they say, oh, you upon whom the reminder has been sent down, indeed you are mad. Why do you not bring to us angels if you are truthful? We do not send down the angels except with truth and then they would not be given respite. So it's not up to the prophets or it's not up to the messengers to bring down angels whenever they want. It's not any kind of magic that has to be performed it is the order of allah the command of allah and then only the angels come indeed we have sent down or the reminder the quran and indeed we are its guardian this is so beautiful this is the protection of the quran that allah is stating here that is why the quran has never been able nobody's ever been able to uh, change the words of the quran nobody's ever been able to change the meaning uh, of the quran um, uh, the quran is set and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we see in ayat 10 that certainly we had sent messengers before you in the sects of the former people and no messenger came to them, but they mocked at him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that every messenger was mocked at. And then in ayat number 12, we see thus we let it enter into the hearts of the criminals. Uh, and, and they do not believe in it and already have passed the ways, um, examples of the former people. And the Quran is very difficult for people to, un, uh, to absorb if their hearts are, are um, rejecting it and they are criminals. And ayat number 14, and even if we open to them a gate from the heaven and they were to continue ascending therein, they would surely say, our eyes have only been dazzled. Nay, we are a people bewitched. So when the, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, even if we opened the gates of heaven and we ascended them, we made them go up into the heavens, even then, what will they say? They would surely say, our eyes have only been dazzled. So if there is no Iman in the heart, there is no belief in the heart, then nothing can show, uh, give guidance. Guidance doesn't come to those people. They are so averse in believing that if we open the gates of heavens for them and make them go back and forth between the earth and sky, they will not be, believe in the mission of our messenger. Rather they would say, that a spell has been cast on them and they are being made to feel that the pressure of one who ascends the sky in the skies towards the heaven. So nothing will make them believe anything. You know, people who have, um, whose hearts are blind, nothing. And what blinds the heart? Arrogance, envy, hatred, um, jealousy, these are the things that blind the heart. And verily, we have placed in the heavens constellations and we have beautified it for the observers and we have protected it from every accursed devil except one who steals the herring then follows him a clear burning flame and the earth we spread it and cast therein firm mountains and cause to grow therein every balanced thing. So before that, we were seeing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, um, Shaitans do not have access to heaven. Um, they just go below it and, and they try to hear things. Uh, they have no access to the actual uh, heaven. And so we see this is an indication of the devils who go up secretly to the sky to listen to what the angels talk about among themselves as, as they do so. Some of them are killed by shooting stars and others succeed in hearing something and then flee away unheard. A hadith describes this phenomena that when Allah decrees a thing, the angels on hearing it flutter their wings to express their humbleness, sounding like a chain striking a mountain. Now when their worry is over, they ask each other what the Lord has decreed. They reply, the truth, and he is high and great. Then the decree of the Lord is read out from the beginning to end. It is around this time while the decree is being read out that the devils mounting one over the other to the, reach the sky, trying to listen to it secretly. Thereupon they are assailed 
by a shower of shooting stars. Most of them who succeed in hearing a word or two are hit by a shower of shooting stars and killed before they can pass on what they have heard to the one below them. But sometimes some of them succeed in passing on the word they have heard to the next below them before they are killed. The devil below who has received the word comes to his friend an astrologer or a priest or a soothsayer and blows the words into his ears. The latter embellishes the word um, he receives from the devil with a hundred lies and passes it on to the people at large. Sahih Bukhari, Tafsir Surah al hijr So um, we see that this is what goes on and um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his messages and um, some of them take a little bit and then add to it and then we when we go to the soothsayers people who go to the soothsayers they're connected with these shaitan who give them these small messages which are incomplete and ayat number 19 we see the earth we have spread it and cast therein for mountains and caused to grow therein every balanced thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this world so beautiful and the mountains are firm uh, and everything is balanced, alhamdulillah. And we have made for you therein means of living and for those other creatures for whom, uh, whom you are not the providers. Allah provides for every creature, not us. And there is not a thing but with us are its inexhaustible treasures. And we do not send it down except in a known measure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's treasures are not limited. It is his wisdom how he gives it out, how he distributes it. Ayat number 22. And we have sent the fertilizing winds and sent down water from the sky and we gave it to you to drink and you are not its retainers. Alhamdulillah, winds are a medium of pollination and water is stored in many different ways in rivers and oceans, seas, lakes, in the glaciers. Alhamdulillah. Ayat number 23. Indeed, it is we who give life and cause death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is we who give life and death and cause death and we are the inheritors. Allah is al uh, um, here we are being described. Um, and, and we are told here that, um, and indeed, it is we who give life and cause death, and we are the inheritors. Ayat number 24. And verily, we know the uh, preceding generations among you, and verily, we know the latter generations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in the past, everything in the future, and everything that's happening in the present. In ayat number 25, and indeed, your Lord will gather them. Indeed, he is all wise, all knowing. Verily, we created man out of clay from altered black mud and we create the jinn from the scorching fire and when your lord said to the angels indeed i will create a human being out of clay from altered black mud so when i have fashioned him and breathed into him my spirit then fall down to him in prostration um so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah 26 and verily we created man out of clay from altered black mud and we see here um that this verse shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the image of Adam from uh, foul smelling mud, Hamayin Masnoon, which it dried up and had a ringing sound, Salsal, Salsal, and he breathed soul into it. Salsal has also been called Fakhrah in the Quran. He created man from ringing clay like a pot, like the potters. This is in Ar Surah Ar Rahman, ayat number 14. Arabs give different names to mud according to its different states. Turab, dry dust. Teen, wet clay. Ham, in, masnoon, foul, smelling mud, molded and altered. Salsal, dried and ringing. Fakhar, uh, fired, pottery, earthenware type. So Azad Adam Islam passed through the different stages of creation. And this verse shows that Allah created the image of Adam Islam in this way. And then we created the jinn before from scorching fire. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the jinn um, 
uh, uh, jinn creatures of uh, are fire are also called that because they are invisible, normally hidden from human eyes. And so we see that when uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says uh, that we created the jinn before from scorching fire, and when your Lord said to the angels, "Indeed, I create." I will create a human being out of clay from altered black mud. So when I have fashioned him and breathed into him my spirit, then fall down to him in prostration, um, prostrating. So the angels prostrated uh, themselves, all of them together, except Iblis. He refused to be with those who prostrated. He said, O oh, Iblis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, Iblis, what is the matter with you that you are not with those who prostrated. He said, I am not one of uh, one to prostrate to a human whom you created out of clay uh, from altered black mud. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then get out of it for indeed you are expelled and indeed upon you will be the curse till the day of judgment. He said, oh my Lord, then give me respite till the day uh, they, ra they are raised. In ayat number 37, he said, then indeed you are of those given respite. Ayat number 38, till the day of time well known. Ayat number 39, he said, my Lord, because you misled me, I will make evil fair seeming to them in the earth and I will mislead all. Ayat number 40, except among them, your sincere slaves. May Allah make us of the sincere slaves that, that the shaitan cannot mislead. Amen. Ayat number 41, he said, this is the way which will lead st straight to me. And ayat number 42, indeed, as for my slaves, you do not have any authority over them except those who follow you of those who go astray. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that my true slaves will never come under your um, tricks. Ayat number 43, and indeed hell is the promised place for all of them. Ayat number 44, and, and it has seven gates, for each gate is a assigned portion. So um, we are being told that hell has um, seven gates. Indeed, the righteous will be in the gardens and water springs. Ayat number 46, it will be said to them, enter in it peace, in peace and security. We all want peace and security. May Allah make us of those who acquire this beautiful place. Indeed, as for my slaves, you do not have any authority over them except those who follow you of those who go astray. Alhamdulillah, this is such a good message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this is glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that shaitan doesn't have any control over us, the people who are, are truly slaves of Allah, who submit to Allah. He doesn't have any authority. He will whisper. He will try to trick us, but we are going to be strong because we are going to be true believers in Allah and we are always going to ask for his help. At 43, and indeed hell is promised place for all of them. So the people who go astray, people who uh, go into and follow the whispers of the shayateen, and indeed hell is the promised place for them. I had 44. It has seven gates. For each gate is an assigned portion. So uh, the different grades of hell, uh, we are being told there are gates. And um, like, for example, maybe one gate will be for the mushrikeen, the other for the thieves, depending on the gravity of sins. According to Ibn Abbas, anhu, there are seven levels of hell. Sayyid, Laza, Kutuma, Saqar, Jahim, and Haviya. This is in Tasirul Quran, volume two, page 493. So, um, all of them are very scary places. May Allah keep us away from there and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the righteous indeed. Uh, ayat number 45, indeed the righteous will be in gardens and water springs. How beautiful, gardens and water springs. Everybody enjoys gardens. Everybody loves water springs. It's such a refreshing feeling when one goes into a garden with springs. Um, 46, it will be said to them, enter in peace and security. Who doesn't want peace and security? Everyone requires peace and security. Those are the essential uh, um, ingredients, you can say, or things that one needs to 
to in be in a tranquil way and to be able able to function in a very calm way peace and security ayat number 47 and we will remove whatever rancor is in their breasts so that they will become brothers facing each other on throne so anything if we have any bad feeling towards anyone that will be removed from us and we will be cleansed and uh, so that we can be at peace Allah in his infinite mercy will remove wherever rancor they may have against each other from their hearts. They will love each other like brothers. And by reading this at, at the time that Hazrat Ali Rajalatalanhu read this verse, he, he said, I'm hopeful that Allah will also clear up matters between Usman, Talha, Zubair, and I. This is recorded. Um, this is, uh, yes, okay, this is um, told to us by the narrations. And so we go on to the next one, next ayat. No fatigue will touch them therein, they will not be removed from it. No fatigue, no tiredness, no, uh, you know, no feeling of uh, that we cannot do anything. Always fresh, full of energy. And inform my slaves that I am oft forgiving the most merciful. Beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah, may Allah make us of those that, uh, that have, that understand these attributes of Allah and that Allah is ghafur rahim towards us. Ayat number 50, and that my punishment, it is most painful punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafur rahim but if there are people who are defiantly disobedient, criminals and sinners, then Allah's azab is very painful, Allah's painful punishment, and inform them about the guests of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Here, uh, the story of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is coming in Alhamdulillah again, and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and inform about the guests of Ibrahim. When they entered upon him and said, peace, he, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Indeed, we are afraid of you. So this is a story of Allah's mercy and Allah's wrath. How the mercy of Allah came to Hazrat Ibrahim Islam through these angels, and how the same angels were a punishment for the um, for the nation of Lut. Ayat number fifty-three. They said, "Do not be afraid. Indeed, we bring glad tidings." Uh, um, to you of a learned boy. So the beautiful news from these angels was to Hazrat Ibrahim Islam that he was going to have a boy. And um, Ibrahim Islam was afraid of the angels because they did not eat the roasted calf he offered them as mentioned in, the, uh, in this Surah Hud, uh, which we read earlier. This verse is yet another proof that the messengers of Allah have no knowledge of the hidden. So here, um, the messengers don't have any, you know, unless and until Allah tells them they don't have any hidden knowledge. Um, in ayat number 53, they said, do not be afraid. Indeed, we bring glad tidings to you of a learned boy. He said, do you give me glad tidings, although old age has overtaken me? Then about what do you give glad tidings? They said, we give you glad tidings in truth. So do not be of the despairing, despairing. So true good news was given to Ibrahim al-Islam through the angels by the command of Allah, 56. He said, and who despairs of the mercy of his Lord except those who are astray? So Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam admits that one should never have despair in their lives, never lose hope. Um, Mu'min never loses hope in Allah. Always praise to Allah for the best. I number 57. He said, then what is your business, O messengers? They said, indeed, we have been sent to a people who are criminals. So Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam in his wisdom understood that there is more to this. There is good news for him, definitely, but they have come for more than this. And so then they revealed to Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam that they have come, um, they have been sent to the people who are criminals, except the family of Lut. Indeed, we will surely save them, except his wife. We have decreed that she is of those who remain behind. And when the messengers came to the family of Lut, he said, indeed, you are people unknown. So these two messengers, these two angels, after giving the good news to Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam, went to Lut al-Islam's nation. And um, Hazrat Lut al-Islam in ayat number 62 is saying that 
they were strangers. They were people unknown. He thought they were people. He is also a messenger of Allah. He also did not know that these were angels. And ayat number 63, they said, nay, we have come to you with that about which they were disputing. And uh, they were disputing about punishment because Lut al-Islam used to say, if you continue this very evil deed, um, then punishment will come. So um, here the angels have been sent to give punishment to this nation for their evil deeds. And we have come to you with truth and indeed we are truthful. So travel with your family in portion of the night and follow them and let not anyone among you look back and go on where you are ordered. So um, the angels are telling Lut al-Islam that he must leave with the people who are good and with his family who is good and the people who do not indulge in this evil act. And in 66, and we convey to him the matter that the root of those sinners would be cut off by early morning. So information was given to Lut al-Islam by these angels and the people of the city came rejoicing. So when the people of the city, when they found out these handsome men, these actually they were angels in the form of handsome men, he, Lut, said, indeed, these are my guests. So do not shame me and fear Allah and do not disgrace me. Uh, they said, did we not forbid you for, uh, from protecting the people of the world? So they're making fun of Lut al-Islam and they're saying that you think you're gonna protect everyone? He, Lut al-Islam said, these are my daughters if you would be doers of lawful marriage. So naturally a prophet of Allah, all the nations, uh, women uh, are like his daughters. So he's saying that they, you know, it's best for you to get married. At number 72, by your life, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, indeed they were wandering blindly, their in intoxication of lust. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling uh, us and, and directly telling Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and telling us that these people were intoxicated by their desires, by their lust. So the awful cry seized them at sunrise and we made its, the city the highest part, its lowest and rained upon them stones of baked clay. So this is the punishment that occurred. What occurred is that the entire city was lifted up and thrown back and uh, there was a rain of stones, baked clay. Um, indeed in that are signs for those who discern, those who investigate, those who find out. And indeed it, the city is on an established road. So even now we can see the Dead Sea, um, it lies between Mecca and Syria. Uh, this is, that is the area where this happened. Indeed, indeed they're in surely a sign for the believers. And to the companions of the wood, the, the people of Madian were surely wrongdoers. So the people of Aika are being mentioned here lived uh, near a dense forest. So um, Aika means the dense forest. And these were the people of Madian. So we took retribution from them. And indeed, they both were on clear highway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know about the nations that were destroyed. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that both townships uh, that were referred here first, um, Sodom of Lut and Midian of Shu'ab al-Islam, both are close by. And then in ayat number 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the dwellers of Al-Hijr, the rocky tract, who denied the messengers. And here in ayat number 80, we see, and certainly the companions of the rocky tract. This beautiful surah is Surah Hijr, which we have been reading, the rocky tract, which is surah number 15. Here it's being mentioned. They denied the messengers. They denied the messengers. Al-Hijr is the name of the settlement of Thamud, the people of Prophet Saleh al-Islam. They have been called as Ashab al-Hijr, their settlement lay between Medina and Tabuk. Hijr is now called Madian Saleh, which lies close to a large town called Al Ula. The dwellers in Al Hijr denied Saleh al Islam, the messengers sent to them, but the, but the verse says that they denied messengers, which is a plural. The reason is that denying one messenger of Allah is tantamount to denying all the messengers. And then in ayat number 81, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the, in translation is, and we gave them our signs, but they were turning away from them. So as we know, we read earlier that one of the signs was the she camel. Uh, 
one of the uh, one of those signs was the she cam and Allah made it come out of a cliff, a tremendous miracle, but the guilty folk killed it, hamstrung it. And uh, we are also told that in ayat number 82, we are told that, and they used to carve from the mountains houses feeling secure. They used to hew our dwellings from hills though they had no fear or no need to do so. In ninth Hijri, on the way to uh, Tabuk, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by the settlement, he wrapped around his head a cloth, quickened the mount and said to his companions, pass on through this settlement, crying in fear of Allah's doom. This is in Sahih Bukhari, Hadith number 449, and Sahih Muslim, uh, 2980. According to a narration, when the companions drew water from the wells of the settlement and needed flour uh, therewith, the Messenger of Allah SWT told them to throw away that water and give the needed flour to the camels. This is in Sahih Muslim, Hadith number 29881. And so And um, ayat number, we go on to ayat number 83. But, but the awful cry seized them at early morning. So here the punishment came and, and did not avail them what they used to earn. Nothing helped them at that time. The punishment came. It was an awful cry. It was an awful sound. And everybody died. Ayat number 85 and we have not created the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them except in truth and indeed the hour is surely coming so everything Allah created is it is in truth which means everything has a purpose there is a reason behind what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this ayat continues so overlook with gracious forgiveness indeed your lord he is the creator and the all-knower two beautiful names of Allah al-khaliq and al-alim Alhamdulillah, he's the creator of everything and he's the knower of everything. Then we go to this beautiful um, ayat, ayat number 87, which describes Surah Fatiha. Um, and certainly we have given you seven of the oft repeated verses and the great Quran. Surah Fatiha, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that this is about Surah Fatiha. And um, there's a beautiful Hadith Qudsi. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I have divided the prayer Surah Fatiha between myself and my servant in two halves. And my servant shall have what he has asked for. When my servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, my servant has praised me. And when he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says, my servant has exalted me. And when he says, Maliki Yawm Din, Allah says, my servant has glorified me. And on one occasion, he said, my servant has submitted my, to my power. And when he says, Allah says, this is between me and my servant. And when he says the rest of the surah, Allah says, this is for my servant and my servant shall have what he has asked for. This is in Sahih Muslim and Tirmizi. Saban Minal Mathani, most commentators interpret this to refer to Surah Fatiha, which contains seven verses and which are recited in every rika of every prayer. These verses are called Mathani because they are repeated again and again. Mathani means repeated often. Let's hear Surah Fatiha, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ آمين Beautiful, beautiful surah we recite in every salah, in every rakah, and no salah is accepted until and unless Surah Fatiha is, is um, recited. Prophet Muhammad said, He who does not recite Surah Fatiha in his salah has no salah. This is in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim recorded. Um, and uh, um, I will tell you, Prophet Muhammad said, I will tell you one surah that is the greatest among all surahs of the Quran, and that is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, and the, uh, that is the seven repeated ones, and Quran Azim that has been given to me. This is recorded in Sahih Bukhari. So, there, uh, Prophet Muhammad said, There is no other surah like this in the Torah. Bible, the Psalms, which is the Zabur, or the Quran, Tirmizi, recorded in Tirmizi. We are so blessed. Such a beautiful surah, which has, which, which defines the relationship between humanity and our Creator. The fact that we turn to Him, we worship Him only, and we turn to Him uh, for help, and that we want to be led astray to the straight path. And we don't want to go on the path of those who have gone astray or those who earn Allah's wrath. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of this surah. And this is the etiquette of uh, approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First we praise him, then we ask for what we need, inshallah. May Allah make us of those who understand this beautiful surah and understand how to uh, relate to our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with total hum humbleness and devotion inshallah. We go on to ayat number 88. Do not extend your eyes towards what we have bestowed to certain categories of them and do not grieve over them and lower your wing to the believers. So do not be jealous or do not be greedy towards people who have more and then lower your wing to the believers Rasul is being told this and we are being told that, that we need to be good to each other. We need to lower our wing and be humble and humbled with each other. We have to, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to teach the believers, of course, and train them and give them tarbiya, um, morals and ethics. Alhamdulillah, what a beautiful teacher Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, has always been. We have been given we have been given you great gifts like Surah Fatiha and the glorious Quran. So do not look at the embellishments of the world and do not turn your eyes to those who love the vanities of the world and deny your mission. So do not grieve over them, but rather lower your wing in tenderness to the believer. To lower one's wing is a proverb derived from the habit of the birds spreading their wings to call back their chicks at the as the chicks cl come close, the bird covers them with its outstretched wings, a symbol of affection and tenderness. So, uh, alhamdulillah. And say, indeed, I am a clearer warner. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, live your life um, like a stranger or a traveler in this world. And, um, and indeed, I'm a clearer warner. So we have to live in this life knowing that we have something good to achieve for the hereafter. And then we go to ayat number 90 and we send down on those who divided the scriptures, those who have made Quran into parts. So by your Lord, we will surely question uh, all of them about what they used to do. So here we are being told about people who used to accept some portions of, Islam, of, of the Quran Majid and some they used to deny, some which pleased them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, that 
they made Quran into parts. So by your Lord, we will surely question all of them about what, what they used to do. So proclaim that which you are ordered and turn away from those who associate partners with Allah. So here in ayat number 94, we are being told that um, now do not, you know, before we, it was secretive, and the message of Islam spread very quietly. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in 1994 ayat of Surah Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so proclaim that which you are ordered and turn away from those who associate partners with Allah. Open dawa, no more secret anymore. Uh, open dawa to all the beautiful message of Islam. Ayat number 95, indeed we are sufficient for you against the mockers. Allah will protect those who walk in his path and, they, and he will be sufficient for uh, them against these mockers who make fun of you. Those who set up another God with Allah, but soon they will come to know. And verily we know that your breast is narrowed by what they say, straightened by what they say. So glorify the, the praise of your Lord and be of those who prostrate to him. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when, you're, when your heart gets narrow, when you're despairing uh, of the people who are making fun of you, what should you do? You should glorify uh, and, and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prostrate, do sajda. So the cure for the heart's distress, um, this is a practical tip here in, in, in times of crisis, uh, do something positive, which is the dhikr of Allah um, to soothe your heart. Um, it will soothe your heart and it will give you energy and also uh, to prostrate. This is, um, uh, you know, to do sajda in front of Allah, to, to, to know that, you know, we are totally dependent on, on Allah and Allah will, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will help us, inshallah, ameen. And ayat number 99, and worship your Lord until the certainty, um, which is death, comes to you. So we, when, how, when are we supposed to worship Allah? We are supposed to worship Allah all the way to our death. May Allah make us of those who are steadfast on this beautiful religion of Islam, this deen of Islam, this lifestyle of Islam that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. And may we die as Muslims, inshallah, ameen. We have completed Surah Hijr by Allah's mercy. Um, we will begin a new surah in this same uh, juz, which is juz number 14. Surah number 16, An-Nahal, the B. This surah was revealed during the last period of Prophet Muhammad residence at Makkah. It contains 128 verses, which are 128 ayats, and the title is derived from the verse, verse uh, number 68 which is about the bee, inshallah, we will go through that. And uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, so the key themes and messages are proof of ta tawheed and refutation of polytheism. The mountains have been set on earth to stabilize its balance. Allah sent messengers to warn against the unbelievers, excuse, if Allah wanted to, we would have not worshipped anyone else, which is mentioned in this surah. Then in this surah, we will also see Allah's promise to provide good abode for those who migrate for his sake. We will also see if Allah were to punish the people for their wrongdoings, we would not, he would not have left even an animal around them. As, as water gives life to the dead land, so the Quran does to the human soul. Allah has provided signs in the lives of the bees, birds, and animals. We will see in this surah that honey is called the cure, and Allah commands to do justice, be good to others, and give to the near relatives, and he forbids indecency, mischief, and rebellion. In this surah, we will also see that uh, one of the themes is seek Allah's protection against Satan before starting to recite the Quran. Halal and Haram are only from Allah. Ibrahim al Islam was a nation in himself. And we will also see in this surah 
call towards the way of Allah with wisdom, advice, and reason in a courteous manner. This is being this is going to be told to us in this surah, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, inshallah, we'll hear the tilawat of Surah An Nahal, the first five ayats, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ata amrullahi fala dastajilu. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushriku. يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ بِالرُّوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ أَنْ أَنْذِرُوا أَنَّهُ لَا خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق تعالى عما يشركون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful command of Allah will come so do not be impatient for it. Glorified is he and exalted is he above what they associate with him. He sends down the angels with the inspiration of his command upon whom he wills of his slaves saying, warn that there is no God except me. So fear me. And so we see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayat number one, the command of Allah will come. The command of Allah will come and so do not hasten it. The indication is to the day of resurrection. That is the day of resurrection, which you consider to be long way off has come near. So seek not to hasten it. And the indication could also be the promised doom, which the pagans doubted would ever come. It is to be noted that the Quran uses mm, the past tense here for an event which has not yet taken place because it is certain that it will take place. And so then we go on. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that glorified is he and exalted is he above what they associate with him. And he sends down the angels with inspiration of his command, but uh, upon whom he wills, his slaves, saying, warn that there is no God except me, so fear me. And so the Ru being mentioned here is um, the literal meaning of Ru is spirit, but the intended meaning is revelation and in another, as in another verse in the Quran also, we would, uh, and many other verses, like in Surah Shura, uh, uh, which is a Surah number 42, ayat number uh, 52, Allah says, and thus we inspired in you a spirit of our command. You knew not what the scripture was, nor what is faith. And so we go on further and uh, he created the heavens and the earth in truth. Everything is for a purpose. Nothing is useless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make anything for just sport and fun. That is, he did not create the universe for sport, but he, but he for a purpose to judge mankind and reward or punish them, depending on their actions as stated in the foregoing verse. And so he, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he created man from a minute quantity of semen, then behold, he's a clear opponent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the fact that, you know, we forget our origin, we forget how we were created and how, where we came from. And then we stand uh, defiantly in front of him and, and, and we try to be uh, arrogant and all. He created man from a drop of semen. He settles in, it settles in the womb of a woman there it develops from one stage to a higher stage by the command of Allah until it is delivered and sees the light of the day. But when he grows up and becomes a man, he argues and disputes about the creator and associates partners with him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is not something that he likes at all. We need to remember how we were created. So arrogance is something, uh, arrogance is 
to reject the truth and to consider others inferior. And this is recorded in Sahih Muslim. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayat number five, the translation is, and the cattle, he created them for you. In them is warmth and benefits, and from them you eat. These are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning his beautiful blessings. Warmth we get from the, from the leather of the cows or the fur of the animals. And um, we, eat, we are allowed to eat the animals. And, and for you in them is beauty when you bring them in for, for the evening and when you take them out to pasture in the morning. Ayat number six, and for you in them is beauty when you bring them in the evening and when you take them out to pasture in the morning. How beautiful they look when they are being brought back and how they listen to the commands of the person who is leading them. Ayat number seven, and they, they carry your loads to the land you could not have reached except with the great trouble uh, to yourselves. Indeed, your Indeed, your Lord is most kind, most merciful. A rawful rahim, beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are so many things that they carry for you. You know how horses carry things, they, they pull carriages and how camels carry loads and how cows also um, pull a cart. So they carry loads to the land you could not have reached except with great trouble. For us, it would be, have been very difficult to carry these difficult heavy items, how Allah helps us through the animals that he made. And it is very, it is very important that uh, we know that Allah has given us these gifts and that we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made everything for us and he has made us for himself, for us to worship him, to thank him. Alhamdulillah, may Allah make us of those who thank him. In ayat number eight, we see, and he created horses and mules and donkeys for you to ride. As an adornment, and he creates that which you do not know. So we have no knowledge of a lot of the things that Allah has made. Before a uh, microscope was invented, we didn't know that there was such a thing as bacteria, germs, viruses. Now, right these days, this is the, the, the health crisis that the entire globe... and we would have never known about it. So there's so much we don't know, so much that is unseen, Allah says. And he created horses and mules and donkeys for you to ride and as an adornment. And he creates that which you do not know. So Allah is always creating. There's so many things we do not know. Uh, this is the majesty of Allah, the grandeur of Allah, the power of Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayat number nine, the translation is, and upon Allah is the direction of the way, and among them some are some are that do not go straight. And if he will, surely he would have guided all of us, all of you, all, you all. Guidance is uh, there. Uh, Allah has given us the, the books, the messengers as role models, but Allah doesn't force anybody. Man has the option to choose. Jinn jin have the um, option to choose. May Allah make us of those who choose the right path. Ayat number 10. He is the one who sends down for you water from the sky. From, from it you drink. From it grows vegetation in, past, in, in which you pasture your cattle. Beautiful, beautiful water comes from the sky. The rain comes from the sky. And what does it do? It makes the vegetation grow all the fruits and vegetables and all the herbs and the, all, all of these. And there, this is also food for the cattle. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah's mercy, Allah has given so much to us. Uh, ayat number 11, with it, he causes to grow for you the crops like olives and date palms and grapes and every kind of fruits. Indeed, in that is a sign for people who reflect. Ayat number 12. And he has subjected for you the night and the day and the sun and the moon and the stars are subjected by his command. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who use reason. We need to use our common sense and understand that all the creation is right in front of us and everything is pointing to a creator. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number 13. And whatever he multiplied for you on the earth of varying colors, indeed, in that is a sign for people who remember. Varying colors, uh, so many things are of, are of different colors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have made everything one color. Then there wouldn't have been such beauty. Colors bring beauty to things. All oh, the fruits have so many colors, the vegetables have so many colors, the flowers, the trees, the plants, the, the sky is blue, subhanAllah, the water, um, everything has a beautiful color, alhamdulillah. And then we see in ayat number 14, and he is the one who has subjected the sea for you to eat fresh fish, fresh meat from it and bring forth uh, from it ornaments that you wear, that you see the ships plowing through it and that you may see um, of his bounty and you may be grateful. So alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the fresh meat from the sea so anything from the sea is halal and there are ornaments there, um, the la corals and um, pearls that one gets from the sea. And um, then the ships go and how the ships can float. This is the mercy of Allah. Ayat number 15, he has cast in the earth firm mountains, lest it should shake with you and rivers and roads that you may be guided. So. Again, mountains have been mentioned. There are many benefits to having mountains on earth. And one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, benefits is also that the way, the way the firm mountains bring balance to the earth. And then in ayat number 16, the translation is, and landmarks, and by the stars, they guide themselves. So there are so many landmarks, you know, right? These days we have the, we have compasses, we have maps, we have the GPS, the global positioning system. We have the satellites to uh, tell us the paths. But before the, the, um, all this, there were landmarks uh, and people used to look at stars for guiding, uh, going from one place to another. And then we look at ayat number 17. Uh, then he who creates like one who does not create, then will you not remember? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning all these beautiful blessings and gifts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then is he who creates like the one who does not create, then will you not remember? How can we, how can we ascribe partners to Allah? Allah is the only creator of all these beautiful blessings. I have number 18. And if you should count the favors of Allah, you cannot enumerate them. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. We cannot count the blessings of Allah. They are uncountable. And Allah knows what you conceal and what you reveal. Allah knows who has a grateful heart and who has an ungrateful heart. May Allah make us of those who are grateful. Shukr, we spoke about it earlier today. Shukr has so many benefits and they're all for us. I number 20, and those whom they invoke besides Allah create nothing, but they are themselves created. They are themselves created and they are dead, not alive, and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. So many people who, who pray at the graves and who, you know, uh, ask those people who have died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those whom they invoke besides Allah create nothing, but they themselves are created. They are dead, not alive, and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. Ayat number 22, your God is one God, but those who do not believe in the hereafter, their hearts refuse and they are arrogant. So um, these are hearts that are faithless, they have no faith and they are arrogant. Undoubtedly, Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal. Indeed, he does not love those who are arrogant. Allah does not love the arrogant ones. Ayat number 24, and when it is said to them, what has your Lord sent down? They say, tales of the ancient. Art number 25, and they may bear, that they may bear their own burdens in the full on the day of resurrection and of the burdens of those whom they misled without knowledge. Unquestionably evil is that which they will bear. So the people who deny the resurrection they deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they lead other people astray. Those are unquestionably uh, evil and they will have to face the punishment. Ayat number 26, verily those before them 
had plotted, but Allah struck, uh, struck at their foundation of their building. So the roof fell upon them from above and the punishment came to them from where they did not perceive. Then on the day of resurrection, he will disgrace them and say, where are my so-called partners concerning whom you used to oppose? Those who were given the knowledge will say, indeed, disgrace will uh, disgrace this day and evil are upon the disbelievers. Indeed, disgrace this day and evil are upon the disbelievers. Ayat number 28. Those whom the angels take in death while they were wrong, wronging themselves, then they would offer submission saying, we were not doing any evil. Nay, indeed, Allah is knower of what they used to do. So those whom the angels take at death time, they, will, they, they were uh, wronging themselves and they would offer submission. Say, now, the, they, at the time of death, they're going to say, oh, we submit to God. This is like, you know, when the Pharaoh was drowning, then he said that I believe in the rub of uh, Musa and Harun. And that, is, that time is too late. Time of death is not the time of submission. Um, and uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we know what he did throughout. Nay, indeed, Allah is the knower of what you used to do. Ayat number 29, so enter the gates of hell to abide in it forever. Surely wretched is the abode of the arrogant. Again, arrogance is being mentioned again and again, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes arrogance. And um, it is, you know, it is like thinking one uh, more than others and thinking less of others and denying the truth that is arrogance and so uh, uh yes so uh, may allah not make us of the arrogant item number 30 and it will be said to those who fear allah what did your lord send send down they will say good for those who do good in this world is good and the home of the hereafter is better and excellent indeed is the home of the righteous may allah make us of those gardens of eden's eden which will which they will enter underneath which rivers flow they will have therein whatever they wish thus allah rewards the righteous and number 32 those whom the angels take them in death they when they are pure saying peace be upon you enter paradise for what you used to do so here we see the, these are the people who believed all throughout their lives and um, uh, what will the angel say? Angel will say, peace be upon you. Enter paradise for what you used to do. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so gracious that he's a shakur that he says that it is what, what we used to do actually. Without his mercy, we cannot enter, we cannot enter Jannah. Uh, so we see here that um, So um, it is divine mercy. So good works have an importance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're not overlooked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without good works, it is futile to hope for divine mercy. And these elaborates further. Allah does not look at your appearances and your wealth, but he looks at your hearts and your actions. This is in Sahih Muslim, I, uh, hadith number 2564. And... Um, it is said that that uh, Prophet Muhammad said, after burial, the deceased listens to the footsteps of his relatives returning from the graveyard. When two angels, strict of speech, come to him, Munkar and Nakir, and order him harshly to sit up, then they begin questioning him. Who is your Rabb? What is your deen? What do you think about the person who was sent to you? And what is your knowledge? A moment replies, my Rabb is Allah. My deen is Islam. And he is the prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I read the book of Allah and came to faith and verified it. Then it is announced from the sky. My servant has said the truth. Make paradise his abode. Give him clothing of paradise and open a window of paradise for him. Hence the air and the fragrance of paradise start coming to him and his grave is expanded as far as the eyes can see. And for a kafir, 
A Kafir is unable to answer these questions and says in distress, I do not know. It is announced from the sky that he is a liar. Make a bed of fire for him and open a door towards fire for him. Hence he feels the heat of hell. His grave gets so narrow that his ribs crush. This is recorded in Abu Dawood, Nisai, and Ibn Majah. And so we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps those who do good deeds in this world with his mercy and then helps them enter paradise. Ayat number 33, do they wait except that the angels should come to them or there comes the command of your Lord, thus did those before them. And Allah did not wrong them, but they wronged themselves. Clear warnings have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we still continue to walk on the wrong path, then we have wronged ourselves. Then they were struck by the evil results of what they did. And they were surrounded by what they used to mock. So these people are the ones who joked around about the messages of Allah. They did not believe, they did not believe the messages to be true. And um, then in ayat number 35, and said those who associate partners with Allah, if Allah had willed, neither we nor our forefathers would have worshipped anything other than him, nor would we have forbidden anything other than him. Thus did those before them, then is there on the messengers except a clear conveyance of the message. So these people are blaming, yeah, are saying that the that if Allah didn't want, then we wouldn't have worshipped anything other other than Him, and you know, and they they were just making fun of all this, and they basically are not accepting their own that they have their own choice, and that absolutely they can turn to Allah if they wanted, but they are too attached to the worldly life. Uh, according to the divine plan, humans have been given will and choice. The purpose is to test them. Allah's messengers tell humans not to misuse this will, but rather to use it in a way that pleases Allah. Allah's messengers cannot do more than convey the message uh, to you. If you misuse your ability to choose which Allah has given you, and you turn to worshipping idols, then uh, idols, the, then indeed, you then indeed you deserve the eternal doom so um may allah make us of those who choose the right path uh, with the mercy of allah we must ask allah for it in a mustaqim ayat number 36 and certainly we send to every nation a messenger saying worship allah and avoid false deities then among them were some whom allah guided and among them were some whom the straying was justified. So travel in the earth and see how was the end of the deniers. Allah is asking us to look around and to see the nations that were destroyed. Ayat number 37, if you desire guidance for them, then indeed Allah will not guide whom he lets go astray and nor will they have any helpers. And, and they swear by Allah, their strongest oaths that Allah will not resurrect one who dies. Nay, it is a true promise upon him, but most of the mankind do not know. Again and again, they denied resurrection. They re de 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 deny the accountability. They deny, deny the day of judgment. And, if, and then how can one ha have good deeds if one denies the day of judgment? Item number 39 that he will make clear to them that where, wherein they differ and those who disbelieve may know that they were liars. So that he may make clear to them that therein they differ, those who disbelieve may know that they were liars. So non-believers are, are a liar, uh, non-believers who reject the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the God, the creator, and they lie about him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide them. Only our world, only our word to a thing when we intend it is that we say to it be and it is. So the re resurrection is not hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All he has to say is be and it becomes. As we can see in the Arabic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, all he has to do is kun fayakun. 
So um, the reason why resurrection will take place, uh, the wisdom behind Allah, uh, uh, there's always wisdom behind everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. The reason is that one day Allah will decide the matters about which people deferred re rewarding the believers and punishing the disbelievers. Moreover, on that day, the disbelievers will also come to know that they were utter liars when they swore oaths denying the resurrection. It is not difficult for Allah to revive the dead. He is all powerful. When he wills a thing, he says, be, and it is, Allah says, and the matter of the hour is but a twinkling of the eye, or it is nearer still. Surah Nahal, ayat number 77. I, we go on to ayat number 41. And those who immigrated in the way of Allah after they were wronged, surely we will give them good position in this world. And surely the reward of the hereafter is greater if only they knew. Hijra means to immigrate from one's land to one that is better. Here in particular, particular it refers to those immigrants who qualify and fulfill the conditions of doing so for the sake of Allah and the religion of Islam. While it is general and it is also possible that it refers to those early Muslims that were no longer able to bear the hardships and persecution of the Meccan um, pagans. So they immigrated to Abyssinia, modern Ethiopia. They numbered about a thousand or more, including women. The, this early wave of immigrants also include Uthman bin Affan and his wife Rukayya, the daughter of Allah's messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah be pleased with them both. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, migration, Hijrat erases all sins that were committed before it. This is in Maruful Quran, volume five, page three, three, nine. A muhajir is one who leaves all those things that Allah and his, a muhajir is the one who leaves all those things that Allah and his messenger, peace be upon him, forbade to do so. And so we, um, Hijrat is from one place to another. Hijrat is also leaving sins behind and going towards good. Uh, migrating from evil deeds to good deeds. Uh, Ayat number 43. Ayat number 42, those who are patient and on their Lord, they put their trust. Ayat 43, and we sent not before you except men to whom we revealed our message. So ask the people of, uh, of the reminder, uh, the scriptures, if you do not know. People, of, uh, people who have knowledge um, of earlier messengers, those are being mentioned here, Ayat 44, and we sent them with clear proofs and the books, and we sent down to you the remembrance that you may make clear to mankind what has been sent down to them and that they may reflect. Ayat number 45, then do those who plot evil deeds feel secure that Allah will not cause the earth to swallow them or that the punishment will not come upon them from where they do not perceive? So how can we be secure? You know, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change the circumstances and anything can happen as he wills. We should be scared of doing things wrong. Um, nobody knew this, this coronavirus will appear all of a sudden. Anything can happen at any time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we need to, live in fear and hope. A woman always lives in fear and hope. Fear of Allah's punishment and hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us and that he will reward us for any good that we do. Uh, may Allah make us of those who remember uh, to live between these two things, fear and hope. Item number 46, or that he may not seize them during their activity, then not will they be able to escape. Allah's grip can seize us at any time. Uh, number 47, or that he may not seize them with a gradual wasting, but indeed your Lord is full of kindness, most merciful. Rauf rahim beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being mentioned. He is the full of kindness. Rauf rahim most merciful. Ayat number 48, have they not considered that Allah what Allah has created, their shadows incline to the right and to the left, prostrating to Allah while they are humble. 
everything is in submission. Everything demonstrates uh, the the fact that it follows the commandments and rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us of those who are humble and follow the commandments of Allah also. And to Allah prostrate whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth of, of the moving creatures and the angels. And they are not arrogant. All the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars, all are following Allah's commands. And they are not arrogant. They are submissive to Allah's commands. May Allah make us of those who follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fear their Lord above them and they do what they are commanded. This is um, a sajda here, sajda tilawat. Uh, we all are asked to prostrate here. We submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we prostrate in front of him inshallah ta'ala. A sajda is required here. Ayat number 51. And Allah has said, do not take for worship two gods. He is only one God. So fear me alone. And to him belong whatever is in the earth, heavens and the earth. And to him is due worship constantly. Then is it other than Allah that you fear? And whatever you have of a favor is from Allah. Then when adversity touches you, to him you cry for help. Then when he removes the adversity from you, behold, a group of you associate others with their Lord. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the difficulty, we forget him. We don't give him credit. We give credit to other people or other things. This is very wrong. This is a very wrong attitude. May Allah make us of those who always reach out to Allah in good times and in bad. Ayat number 55. So as to deny that which he has given them, then enjoy yourselves. Soon you will know. So if we deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his gifts, then we are ungrateful. And Allah does not like people who are ungrateful. And they assign to what they do not know a portion of what we have provided them by Allah. You will be surely asked about what you used to invent. And they attribute daughters to Allah. Glory be to him. And for them is what they desire. They, uh, people of, of that time used to attribute the angels as daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is total blasphemy and when one of them is given good news of a birth of a female his face darkens and he suppresses grief. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning those people of that time uh, of the Quraysh who used to get very upset if they had a baby girl. Uh, they didn't value females at that time. And of course, Islam came to value females to show the value of a female. And um, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he who brought up three daughters or sisters, educated and trained them and, and accorded benevolent treatment selflessly. Allah makes Jannah compulsory for the person. A person inquired, what if there are two? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Reward is the same for bringing up two girls. Ibn Abbas anhu, says, if people had asked him about one girl, Prophet peace be upon him would have said the same. This is reported in Mishkar. If a person is tested by Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if a person is tested by Allah through his daughters and he treats them well, those daughters will be a shield from hell for him. This is agreed upon. Another hadith we'll mention here, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a daughter is born to a person and he does not bury her in accordance with the pagan custom, nor does he consider her inferior, nor does he give preference to the son over her, Allah shall give such a person paradise. This is reported in Abu Dawood. The person who brings up two daughters will be like this, me, uh, like this, me on the day of judgment. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put together his index and middle fingers. This is reported in Sahih Muslim. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who brings up two daughters will be like this on the day of judgment. Um, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put two, together his middle finger, middle finger and index finger. This is reported in Sahih Muslim. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm leaving amongst you two things. If you hold on to them, you will not go astray. They are the book of Allah and, the, and, and his prophet Sunnah. This is the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
to value girls. And so Alhamdulillah, um, to, we must be, we are of his ummah, the ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who valued everyone always. Ayat number 59. He hides himself. Now we're talking about this person uh, and we're going to read 58 and 59 again. 58 again, and when one of them is given good news of the birth of a female, his face darkens and he suppresses grief. He hides himself from the people because of the evil of which he has been informed. Should he keep it in humiliation or bury it in the dust? Unquestionably, evil is what they decide. For those who do not believe in the hereafter applies a similitude of evil, and to Allah applies the highest similitude, and he is the almighty, all wise. Ayat number 61, and if Allah were to seize mankind for their wrongdoing, he would not have left upon the earth any moving creature, but he defers them to an appointed term. Then when their term comes, they will not, not remain behind an hour, nor can they advance it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if humanity is, is always committing sins, and so are the jinns, and if Allah seized us for our, for our sins, none of us would be alive today. I have number 62, and they assign to Allah what they dislike, and they assign to Allah what they dislike, and their tongues assert the lie that they will have the best, no doubt. For them is fire, and they will be abandoned. By Allah, certainly we sent messengers to nations before you, but shaitan made their deeds fair seeming to them. So he is their ally today and for them is a painful punishment. Ad number 64, and we have not revealed to you the book except that you may make clear to them that which they defer and a guidance and a mercy for those who believe. This beautiful book is a guidance and a mercy and a clear way. Ad number 65, and Allah sends down water from the sky and gives life thereby to the earth after death. Indeed, in that is a sign for people who listen. Ayat number 66, and indeed for you is a lesson in the cattle. We give you drink from what is in their bellies between the bowels and blood, pure milk, palatable to the drinkers. Isn't this a miracle in itself? The fact that we get white, pure milk from the cattle. How Allah creates this is so beautiful. So here we have the food which the cattle eat, goes into their bellies and produces refuse, blood and milk. The refuse passes out, the blood goes through the veins to their reaches the udders without getting mixed with either refuse or blood, a blessing for mankind. This is the miracle of Allah. Subhanahu wa makes his, um, his creation uh, the way it is. It is absolutely a miracle. And then we go on. Um, and indeed for you is a lesson in the cattle. We give you drink from what is in their bellies between bowels and blood, pure milk, pure milk, palatable to the drinkers. Ayat number 67. And from the fruits of date palms and grapes, you take intoxicant and good provision. Indeed, in that is a sign for a people who use reason. At number 68, and your Lord inspired to the bee. And here we have uh, an nahal the bee, which is the name of the surah also, at number 68, and your Lord inspired to the bee. Take for yourself houses among the mountains and among the trees. and in that which they construct. So then eat from all the fruits and follow the ways of your Lord submissively. Uh, comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying colors in which is a healing for mankind. Indeed, in that is a sign for people who reflect. And so he, and, um, from its bellies comes uh, a drink uh, of varying colors, which is a healing to mankind. Honey is, is, is a cure for so many things. And um, we, we see here in this um, slide that is coming up that... Um, 
any healing for humankind. There comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying color, wherein is healing for men. Ver verily, in this indeed, a sign for people who think this is um, this ayat. And then we are we're told we will look at a few things about the bee. The bee assimilates juices of various kinds of um, from various kinds of flowers and fruit and forms honey within its body, which it stores in its cells of wax. Only a couple of centuries ago, humans came to know that honey comes from the belly of the bee. But this fact was mentioned in the Quran 1,400 years ago. We are only now aware that honey has healing properties and it also has a, is a mild antiseptic. The Russians would use honey to cover their wounds in World War II. The wound would retain moisture and would leave very little scar tissue. Due to the density of the honey, no fungus or bacteria could grow in the wound. Honey is also so rich in toast and vitamin K. These are so many, there's so many benefits to the uh, honey and Allah says here, and your Lord inspired the bee. Take for your houses among the mountains and among the trees and in that which they construct. Then eat from all fruits and follow the ways of your Lord submissively. comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying colors in which is a healing for humankind. Indeed, in that is a sign for people. And Allah created you, then he will cause you to die. And among you is he who is sent back to the most abject old age so that he will not know a thing after having had knowledge. Indeed, Allah is all knowing, all powerful. So here we are being told that Allah... Um, make some people get very old and they get forget they become forgetful so this is the wisdom of allah why some people die early why some people die much later in life this is allah's wisdom which we do not understand and allah has favored some of you over others in provision but those who were favored would not hand over their provision to those whom their right hand possesses which is slaves so that they are equal to them, then is it the favor of Allah that they reject? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is mentioning the fact that when we give provision to some people who have a lot, they do not give that the type of provision to their employees, their slaves, their uh, what their hand, right hand possesses is being said here. Nobody would like to distribute his wealth among himself and his slaves in the way that makes him equal to his slaves. So then how would Allah, the creator, ever agree to some of his own creatures and slaves being set up as equal partners of, of him? So this verse also tells us that the disparity of wealth among the humans is a law of nature. This disparity cannot be removed by force, as is done in the socialistic systems. And so Allah also tells us that giving part of the provisions which Allah has bestowed on them as offerings at the altars of saints or idols is clear in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go on to ayat 72, and Allah has made for you spouses of your own kind and has made for you from your spouses sons and grandsons and has provided for you from the good things. Then do they believe in falsehood and disbelieve in the favor of Allah? These are the favors of Allah, our relatives, our spouses, our, our children. These are all favors of Allah. And we, are, are, we at times do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank other uh, things. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is the one who blesses you with the offspring and provides you as well as them with good nourishment. Yet you turn away from your real benefactor bowing your heads and bending your knees to others who can give you nothing? Is this not ingratitude? Then we go on to number 73. Um, ayat number 73 says, the translation is, and they worship other than Allah, that which does not 
possess any provision for them from the heaven and from the earth, and they are unable to do so. Nothing else can provide us. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us that, that we leave Allah and worship those who have no power at all. Um, the, the deities are absolutely powerless. And in nine, ayat number 74, so do not invent any similitude for Allah. Indeed, Allah knows and you do not know. So, so the pagans, they worship idols or deities, believing that the latter intercede for them with Allah. To justify their evil, they coin the similitude of a king that nobody can approach except by his minister or secretary. And so our, they say, these people say that your prayers cannot reach him without a medium, without an intercessor. Allah rebutes this argument. Allah is the creator, all-knowing, all-powerful, while a king is his creature, a weakling, almost nothing compared to Allah Almighty. A king does not know everything, does not hear everything, does not have absolute power to do whatever he desires. On the other hand, Allah knows the secrets of the hearts. He knows the needs of every creature. He knows the hidden, just as he knows the manifest. He knows what we do in the darkest of the darkness. He hears everyone's plea for help anywhere at any time. There is no comparison whatsoever between a temporal ruler and the almighty creator of the universe. It is, a sheer, it is sheer nonsense to draw a parallel between the creator and the created being. And Allah presents an example of a slave who is owned and does not have power on anything and the one whom he who we have provided from us good provision so he spends from it secretly and publicly can they be equal all praise is for allah nay but most of them do not know so as we read ayat number 75 this verse draws a comparison between a slave and a free person Obviously, they're not equal, although both are created beings. So how, how then can uh, your false deities, who are creatures, be equal to Allah, the, who is the creator? And some commentators see that this is a similitude between a believer and a disbeliever. And so we, uh, we are from the same species, and we, we and we have some people that who who think that they are above others, and uh, how can that be? There is no there is no difference between the species. And um, here we have Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who is the master, and we are His slaves. Ayat number seventy six. And Allah presents an example of two men. One of them is dumb, unable to do a thing, while he is a burden on his master. Wherever he di directs him, he does not bring any good. Is he equal to the one who commands justice while he is on a straight path? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two types of people. Uh, 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 if a master has a uh, slave who is deaf and dumb, he becomes a burden on the master. And the second one is intelligent and understands everything at the glimpse, at just right away. So can those two be equal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks. And so, so, so just as the two cannot be equal, how can Allah and those whom people set up as his partners be equal? Ayat number 77. And to Allah belongs the unseen of the heavens and the earth. And the matter of the hour is but as a twinkling of the eye or event nearer. Indeed, Allah is all powerful on everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here in Ayat 72, and to Allah belongs uh, the unseen of the heavens and, and the earth. So there's so much uh, in the heavens and the earth uh, that we don't know about. In the heavens and the earth, there are countless things which nobody knows except Allah. Nobody shares his attribute, uh, this attribute with him. He alone is all-knowing. Nobody else, no creature is all-knowing. The unseen of the heaven and the earth here um, could also mean knowledge of the final hour. Nobody has any knowledge of it except Allah. Hence, the 
inference is that Allah alone has the right to be worshipped to the exclusion of idols and people dead or alive who have no knowledge of anything nor the power to harm or benefit anyone. Allah can destroy this vast universe in the blink of the eye or even sooner. This is his absolute power. He says be and it is. The uh, hour simply is a matter of his will. So the last day, the day of judgment can come whenever Allah desires. It's that easy for him. Ayat right, number 78. And Allah brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers when you knew nothing and gave you the hearing and the sight and heart so that you might give thanks. How um, fragile we were, how feeble we were, how weak we were, how um, dependent we were when we were born. Allah brought, uh, brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers when you knew nothing and we knew nothing and gave you hearing and sight and heart so that you might give thanks. So we need to stop and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our hearing, our sight, our hearts that beat without us telling it to beat. The heart keeps beating, it keeps bump, pumping the blood. Do we ever thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the systems that he has put into us, our nervous system, our, uh, our blood circulation, our um, breathing, our heartbeat, our, our nervous system, our, uh, our the immunity, uh, and all that that Allah has put into us. Allah is above everything. Um, man should realize the value of these divine gifts, sight, hearing, and intelligence. We should be grateful to our Lord and use them to do good works to earn his pleasure. We should obey and worship him, and we should show gratitude to Allah by our actions, not merely our words. According uh, to her, these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, According to a hadith, Allah says, my slave does not draw nearer, nearer to me except by obligatory works. He continues in that with the voluntary works until I love him. When I love him, I become his ears. Uh, he, he hears with his eyes, he sees with his hands, he holds with his legs, he walks with. Then he asks of me, I give him. And when he seeks refuge in me, I grant him refuge. This is in Sahih Bukhari Hadith number 6502. So when a person devotes his uh, worship entirely to Allah, he does only that which pleases Allah. He sees what Allah permits him to see and hears what Allah permits him to hear. Whatever he holds by his hand and whatever he, wherever he walks, he is guided by Allah. Sharia. He uses his faculties to earn Allah's pleasure. He obeys him in all of his works. As a result of the unquestioning obedience, Allah helps him. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah make us of those who get closer to Allah so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us in every direction of our lives. Ameen. We go forward, inshallah ta'ala. Do they not see the birds controlled in the midst of the sky? None holds them except Allah. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who believe. These days, we are all at home and uh, we go outside when we see uh, the outdoors, we see the birds flying in the sky and we should wonder who holds these birds up. And Allah says, do, you, do they not see the birds controlled in the midst of the sky? None holds them except Allah. Indeed, in that are signs for people who believe. This is a miracle. These are the miracles of Allah, how birds fly from one place to another. How they migrate and how they for hours and hours travel. At number 80, and Allah has made for you in your homes a place of rest and made for you tents from the hides of the cattle which you hide, uh, which you find light on, on the day of your travel and day of your encampment and from their wool, fur hair is furnishing and provision of, for a time. 
these are the comforts that Allah has given us. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives these blessings to us, alhamdulillah. And so we must be grateful to Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tents made of the hides of cattle, easy to carry during journeys and easy to pitch in the event of need to protect us from cold and heat. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much in this world. May we be uh, those who are grateful. Ayat number 81, and Allah has made for you from that which he created shades and has made for you shelters from the mountains and has made for you garments which protect you from the heat and garments, coats of armor to protect you from your mutual violence, which is wars. Thus he completes his favor upon you so that you may submit to him. So much Allah has given us to for us to run our worldly affairs ayat number 82 then if they turn away then only upon you is the clear conveyance of the message even after seeing all these blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if people still turn away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam you only have to give this message your duty is to give this message guidance only comes from allah ayat number 83 they recognize the favor of allah then they deny it and most of them are disbelievers this is a very sad statement allah is mentioning here in ayat 83 that they recognize allah's favor but they deny it and most of them are disbelievers ayat number 84 and <clears throat> think of the day when we will resurrect from every nation a witness then it will not be permitted to the disbelievers to apologize, nor will they be asked to make amends. So every prophet of the Ummah will be there and the nation and, and think of the day when we will resurrect from every nation a witness. So the prophets are going to be the witness for their nation. Um, so the time for good deeds is now, time for Tawbah is now, so that we do not embarrass our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Him, we being his Ummah, we need to be good. So we can follow, we should follow the, uh, in the steps of Rasul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ayat number 85, and when those who wronged will see the punishment, then it will be not lightened for them nor will they be given respite and when those who associated partners with Allah will see their partners they will say our Lord these are our partners whom we used to invoke besides you but they will throw back at them their word indeed you are liars and they will offer to Allah their submission on the day and lost from them is what they used to invent and those who disbelieved and hindered people from the way of Allah, we will increase them in punishment over their punishment because they used to spread corruption. Today, we will resurrect among every nation a witness over them from themselves, and we will bring you as a witness over these. And we sent down the book as a clarification for everything and as a guidance and a mercy and glad tidings for the Muslims. The holy book of the Quran that we have in our hands, alhamdulillah, it indeed is a mercy for humanity. Narrated by Abu Huraira, Raziullah ta'ala anhu, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, there was no prophet among the prophets, but was given miracles because of which people had security or had belief. But what I have been given is the divine revelation which Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will be more than those of any other prophet on the day of resurrection. This is recorded in Sahih Bukhari 7274. Quran Majid, Quran is an exposition of all things, means simply that it recounts all events past and present the knowledge of which is useful for mankind. Moreover, it contains the law that is what is permissible and what is forbidden, the injunctions, the in, and all that which relates to man's temporal and spiritual life. All these details are to be found in the Quran and the Hadith. Alhamdulillah, we are a blessed nation. We need to spread this beautiful message of Islam. Indeed, 
May Allah help us to do that. Ayat number 90. Indeed, Allah commands justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you so that you may take heed. So the revelation of this, there's a background to this uh, beautiful ayat here. Uthman bin Mazun anhu, says, initially I accepted Islam for face keeping because people said so. It was not heartfelt. One day I was visiting Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the revelation started coming to him. And after a strange incident, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a messenger of Allah came to me and revealed this verse to me. Then he recited this verse on witnessing the revelation and hearing Iman faith and hearing it, Iman faith became strong in my heart and the love for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became dear to me. This is recorded in Maraful Quran, volume five, page 388, Ibn Kathir. <clears throat> Abdullah bin Masood anhu said, this is the most comprehensive verse of the Quran. This is also recorded in Maraful Quran, volume 5, page 387, Ibn Kathir. And so we see that in this um, <clears throat> ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about adal, justice. One should be fair and just to everyone. One should never let one's bias or prejudice, envy or spite cloud or overpower one's judgment while dealing with others. And so <clears throat> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, here that indeed Allah commands justice and good conduct. And good conduct is part of being uh, a Muslim, part of good personality, good character, and giving to the relatives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we must share with our relatives who have less than us, and he forbids immorality and um and had and bad conduct and oppression and he admonishes you that you may take heed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding us warning us and telling us what is right and what is wrong Hazrat Jibreel al-Islam questioned Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is ihsan and <clears throat> the prophet uh, peace be upon him replied you worship Allah thinking that you're seeing him or at least know that he sees you so you cannot be a moment until you choose for your brother what you choose for yourself. This is a creed upon. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that you cannot be a moment until you choose for your brother what you choose for yourself. And we also have a beautiful hadith about uh, keeping relations and being good to our, our um, relatives. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us Whoever wants expanse in his sustenance and long life should keep good blood ties. This is agreed upon. And so another beautiful hadith, um, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or is being oppressed. The companions said, they asked, what can an oppress, how can an oppressor be helped? How how can an oppressor be helped? Prophet Muhammad said, stop the oppressor from oppressing others. This is agreed upon. So may Allah make us of those who value our relationships. May Allah make us of those who are do justice and are not biased. May Allah keep us away from immorality. And may Allah make us kind and charitable, inshallah. And may Allah uh, help us all to worship him in the best way that we can, inshallah, ameen. Let's go on to ayat number 91. And fulfill the covenant of Allah when you have taken it and do not break the oaths after their confirmation while you have made Allah a surety over you. Indeed, Allah knows what you do. So the covenant that we make with Allah, we should not break. If we make, if we promise Allah to do something, we should do same. If we promise, if we if we make oaths with people, we should not break them. Ayat number ninety two, and do not be the like the one who twists her spun iron after who untwists her spun iron 
I'm, I'm sorry, let art number 92, and do not be like the one who untwists her spun yarn after it was strong into untwisted strands, taking your oats as a means of deception between you because one community is more numerous than another community. Allah only tests you by it and he will make clear to you on the day of resurrection that over which you used to differ. So here is um, a similitude Allah is making. Allah is speaking about the fact that don't be like, like a woman who spuns the yarn and then takes it apart and throws it away in strands. Do not break your oaths after you make them. Do not deceive. Do not cheat. Do not... Um, you know, make promises that, that, that later on you break because this is a sign of a mad person who, who, tr who relates one thing or does one thing, then, then uh, untwists it and breaks it and um, uh, makes it useless. So breaking a sworn oath is like spinning thread and breaking it into filaments later on. This is the simile that Allah uses here. May Allah make us of those who keep our promises. And if Allah had willed, surely he could have made you a single nation but he lets go astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills. And you will surely be questioned about what you used to do. It is in Allah's wisdom and why he made different nations, how he made different nations. And of, as we know, this world is a test. It's a trial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us all throughout. And Allah never lets go astray any anybody unless that person has been given the message and that mes that mes that person has rejected the message categorically so and we also have to know from this uh, ayat we understand that surely we will be questioned about what we are doing in this world so may our steps be good ones may our guide be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ameen and do not take your oaths as means of deception between you, lest a foot slips after it was firmly planted and you would taste the evil consequences of having hindered people from the way of Allah. And for you is great punishment. So we are not supposed to make oaths that would deceive other people. We are not supposed to make promises that will deceive other people. Um, you know, these t type of promises makes us go on the wrong path. And um, then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, never hinder people from the way of Allah. Because people who hinder people from the way of Allah, there's a great punishment for them. And do not exchange the covenant of Allah for a small price. Indeed, what is with Allah is best, only if you knew. May Allah make us understand that what Allah has for us is Jannat. It is paradise. It is the ultimate success. May we remember it always. Uh, Rasul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to this world to give us the good news of, of Jannah, of salvation, and to warn us against the hellfire. So let's not, you know, sell the, the messages of Allah for a small price. Let's not hide the truth. Let's always reveal the truth, inshallah, the truth that is in the Quran Majid. Alhamdulillah, we go on to ayat number 96. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the English translation is, whatever is with you will be exhausted, and whatever is with Allah will remain, subhanAllah. And surely we will pay those who are patient with a reward accordingly to the best of what they used to do, subhanAllah. How merciful is Allah, how gracious is Allah, and how truthfully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that everything that we have is going to finish, it's going to be exhausted, it's going to come to an end. But what is with Allah will remain forever. Everything that Allah has will remain forever. Everything, any good deed we send to Allah, we do for the pleasure of Allah will remain with Allah. 
So let's do those things that will actually remain forever. Good deeds, dhikr of Allah, alhamdulillah, tilawat e quran inshallah, doing all that Allah wants us, following his commands, t staying away from what is forbidden. And then Allah says, and surely we will pay those who are patient. And Allah has a great reward for the patient. Uh, according to the best of what they used to do. So sometimes we are patient for small things and sometimes we're patient for big trials and tribulations that come in our lives and otherwise. Sometimes we're, we're patient with, with temptation and we do not go towards temptation and we work at our sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I will reward you accordingly to the best of what you used to do. So whatever patience we showed or whatever good deed we did, the best of that, Allah will take that uh, and Allah will um, reward us in the best way. And the reward from Allah can be nothing but excellent. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and guide us towards good. Ameen. Right, number 97 whoever does righteous deeds whether male or female female while he is a believer will surely give him allah will surely we will surely give him good life and we will surely pay them their reward according to the best of what they used to do according to the best of what they used to do subhanallah ayat number 98 so when you recite the quran seek refuge in allah from shaitan the accursed so alhamdulillah, when we begin the Quran, we say this, um, uh, we, uh, we always take a reference of this ayat, ayat number 98 of and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that we should ask for his refuge from the accursed shaitan. And um, may Allah make us always remember this, inshallah. This is a very important ayat here. And so when you recite the Quran, seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan, the accursed. Shaitan regime. Um, we'll go on to 99, ayat number 99. Indeed, he does not have any authority over those who believe and put their trust in Allah, in their Lord. So Allah, uh, Allah Taala is telling us that um, the shaitan doesn't have any authority on us. He can only whisper to us. And we are the ones that are supposed to disregard those whispers and turn towards God. As refuge. I had number one. So I had number 100. His authority is only over those who take him as an ally and those who associate partners with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that the shaitan has control over those who want to make shaitan their friend, Satan their friend. If they want to make Satan their ally, then naturally then he will control them. And those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can also be easily controlled by shaitan. May Allah not make us those who associate any partners with Allah. May Allah not make us of those who want to make shaitan our friend, who want to do mischievous things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from temptation, trials, tribulations, and um, all kinds of fitna, taghut, ameen. Ayat 101. And when we substitute a verse in place of a verse, and Allah is most knowing of what he sent down, they say, you are an inventor. Nay, most of them do not know. It is Allah's prerogative. It is Allah's will. If he wants to bring an ayat and then later on supersede it with another uh, verse, which he feels is better for that time. And it is not uh, that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making it up on his own or inventing something. He's the one that brings the verse and he won't abrogate them if he wants. Ayat number 102, say the Holy Spirit, Jibreel has brought it down from your Lord in truth to, to make firm those who believe and the guidance and glad tidings uh, to the Muslims.
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know in ayat number 102, the translation is, say the Holy Spirit, Jibreel al-Islam, has brought it down from your Lord in truth to make firm those who believe and as guidance and glad, glad tidings to the Muslim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, uh, gave the messages to Hazrat Jibreel al-Islam and Hazrat Jibreel al-Islam brought them to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A very beautiful uh, chain of transmission. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ayat 103. And we certainly know that they say it is only human being who teaches him. The tongue of the one they refer to is foreign, while this is in clear Arabic language. So the people of Quraysh used to say that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being taught by somebody they used to name. And actually that person that they used to name is, is actually a foreign person. He never knew Arabic. How could he be teaching uh, such eloquent words, such unique piece of Arabic? It was so strange that they used to say this. Ayat number 104, indeed those who do not believe in the verses of Allah, Allah will not guide them and for them is a painful punishment. Only they invent falsehood who do not believe in the verses of Allah. They are the liars. Ayat 106, whoever disbelieves in Allah after his belief, except one who is forced while his heart is content with faith, but those who open their breasts to disbelieve, then upon them is wrath of Allah, and for them is a punishment great. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that if somebody is forced somebody's being tortured or are punished, then this is a very important religious ruling here. But the heart is firm on faith. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you can say uh, the opposite. Whoever disbelieves in Allah after his belief, except one who is forced while his heart is content with faith, but those who open their breasts to disbelieve, then upon them is wrath of Allah. And for them is a great punishment. So this verse was revealed regarding the companions who were detained and tortured by the pagans. The pagans gave them an ultimated, ultimatum, leave Islam or die. This is in Marful Quran, volume 5, page 406. So um, Allah has given this ease. If one is being tortured, then one can say that one can go along with the people who are torturing him and, and in the heart always have firm faith. At 107, that is because they preferred the life of this world over the hereafter and that Allah does not guide the people who disbelieve. Those are the ones whose hearts, hearing and sight Allah set a seal and those are the heedless, no doubt. They are the losers in the hereafter. Then indeed your Lord to those who immigrated after they had been put to trials, then strove hard, were patient indeed your Lord after that is surely of forgiving most merciful. So it is um, those people who immigrated for Allah's sake, um, there's extreme patience required uh, for jihad and for hijrat. And um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives um, he's most uh, forgiving and most merciful. Ayat 111, on the day when every soul will come pleading for itself and every soul will be fully co compensated for what it did and they will not be wronged. Allah is just. Allah will never wrong anyone. Ayat 112, and Allah sets forth similitude of a town that was secure and content, its provision coming to it in abundance from every place, but it denied the favors of Allah. So Allah made it taste the garb of hunger and fear for what they used to do. A town which was content in gratitude of that town, what happens to people who are, in, uh, who are ungrateful, uh, this is a very deadly trait. May Allah not make us of those who are ungrateful because it eats up the blessings of Allah and um, the punishment of Allah comes. And, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they felt secure and content. And then all of a sudden, uh, this fear came on them, hunger came on them. May Allah individually, each individual, each family unit, each society be a grateful society, each country. We need to be grateful to Allah for the blessings. 
we need to be thankful to Allah for the blessings because we don't want the wrath of Allah that will bring misery to humanity. And we're facing this pandemic. May Allah forgive us for our sins. I had 113 and certainly came to them a messenger from among themselves, but they denied him. So the punishment seized them while they were wrong doers. I had number 114. So eat of what Allah has provided you lawful and good and be grateful for the favors of Allah. If him alone you worship. Alhamdulillah, let's remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's always say Bismillah when we eat our food. Alhamdulillah, when we finish our food. Let, let us be grateful for the provision that he has given us. Ayat 115. He has only forbidden to you dead animal, blood, the flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah. But if one is forced by necessity, neither by will, willful disobedience nor transgression, the limits, then indeed Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. We, we went through Surah Al-Baqarah and Maida and Anam. All those described the halal and haram. And um, may Allah let, make us aware of what is halal and what is haram, what we are allowed to consume and what we are not allowed to consume. Ayat 116. And do not say about what your tongues assert of falsehood. This is lawful and this is forbidden. To invent a lie about Allah, indeed those who invent a lie about Allah will not succeed. So they will, those people will never prosper who, who in the name of Allah say this is halal, that is haram. Halal is only a halal if Allah has made it halal. Haram is only haram if Allah has made it haram. At 117, a little enjoyment will be theirs and they will have a painful punishment. Ayat number 118, and to the Jews we have forbidden that which we related to you before and we did not wrong them, but they used to wrong themselves. So the Sharia of the Jews was more difficult and they many times defied Allah, so Allah made it more difficult for them. Ayat number 119, then indeed your Lord to those who did evil in ignorance, then repented after that and corrected themselves indeed your lord thereafter is of forgiving most merciful so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have a moderate way of living and not to lose the balance uh, Allah, has, Allah is telling us that uh, and indeed your lord to those who did evil in ignorance so evil in ignorance and then repented and corrected themselves and Allah is forever he is of forgiving most merciful Indeed, ayat number 120, indeed, Ibrahim was a nation obedient to Allah, upright, and he was not of those who associate others with Allah. This is such a beautiful thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam, Khalilullah, the friend of Allah. What has he said? He was upright, Hanifa, and he was um, ummah, a whole nation in himself. Why? Because he preached Tawheed when no one else believed in one creator. He had to face all the difficult situations coming especially first from his family's own father, then his, the entire area where he was, everyone. But he stood alone and declared Tawheed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ibrahim al-Islam was as good as a nation by himself. He was of those who never associated partners with Allah, a true monotheistic. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ayat number 121, he was thankful for his favors. He chose him and guided him to the straight way. He was a grateful, grateful person. Um, Shakiran, alhamdulillah. Ayat 122, and we gave him good in this world and in the hereafter, he will surely be among the righteous. And we reveal to you, follow the religion of Ibrahim upright, and he was not of those who associated others with Allah. Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam, the father of uh, all, the, in all the religions, these, everyone acknowledges him, the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. He was, he was the friend of Allah and Allah has honored him. 
uh, ayat 124. The Sabbath was only appointed for those who deferred concerning it, and indeed your Lord will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning that over which they used to defer. And so in Ayat 124, Sabbath was only appointed for those who deferred concerning it. So what is the nature of the, uh, this difference? There is no single opinion about it. According to some, Musa al-Islam appointed Friday for the Jews, but they did not accept it, asking him to appoint Saturday instead for worship. So Allah said to Musa, let it be so. Let them have the day they have chosen for themselves. Some say that Allah told them to choose any day of the week for special worship, but they deferred among themselves and later settled for Saturday, while the Christians opted for Sunday. As for the Muslims, Allah appointed Friday. Still others say that the Christians chose Sunday just to keep uh, them distinct from the Jews. But we know that Allah appointed Friday for the Muslims is proven by many hadiths in uh, Sahih Bukhari uh, 876 and Muslim hadith 855. Ayat 125. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good instruction and discuss with them in the way that is best. Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of what strayed from his way and he is most knowing of those who are guided. This is a very beautiful ayah. It calls people to guidance. It tells us how to give this message of Islam, how to give the, the dawah in the most beautiful way with wisdom and good instruction and discuss with them in the way that is best, in the most politest, kindest of ways, uh, loving ways. Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of, of who has strayed from his way and he is most knowing of those who are guided. We see what a beautiful way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to preach this beautiful message of Islam. This verse lays down uh, rules for preaching and missionary activity, wisdom, fair exhortation, gentleness in speech. Wisdom refers to the Quran and Hadith. In other words, a preacher should base their entire sermon on these two basic sources as well as pure wisdom, rather than on sayings of common men or arguments of philosophers. So Alhamdulillah, we must uh, preach in the most beautiful way, in a soft spoken way. Um, there should be no harshness or bitterness in or no foul language. Uh, there should be no sarcasm. Uh, and you know, even when um, when Musa al Islam was going to the Pharaoh, uh, to the Pharaoh, to the Pharaoh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, uh, Allah told Musa and Harun to speak to Pharaoh in, a gen in gently and speak unto him a gentle word that perhaps he may take heed or fear. This is in Surah Taha. Uh, which is surah number 20, ayat number 44. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and Hazrat Harun alayhi salam to speak in a gentle way to Firon, nobody is as bad as Firon. So when we approach people, we approach people with gentleness indeed. Inshallah, may Allah make us of those who are gentle. Ayat number 126. And if you relate sorry and if you retaliate retaliate with an equivalent of that with which you were afflicted but if you are patient it is better for those who are patient so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if somebody is aggressive with you you can be just that much aggressive not more aggressive than then it has to be equivalent then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, but if you are patient, it is better for those who are patient. It's a virtue to be patient. It's a virtue to forgive. It's a virtue not to be aggressive. So, um, so if you retaliate, retaliate with an equivalent of that which you were afflicted. But if you are patient, it is better for those who are patient. May Allah make us of those who are patient. And be patient, and your patience is not but from Allah. And do not grieve over them, and do not be in distress over what they plot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that even patience comes from Allah. So let's ask Allah for patience, inshallah. Ayat number 128, and indeed Allah is with those who fear him and those who are good doers. May Allah make us of those who fear him. Fear, fear him meaning that we fear that he will get
angry with us or displeased with us and may Allah make us of the good doers alhamdulillah rabbil alamin by Allah's mercy we has we have gone through this surah surah number 16 the b Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, we are looking at Fihi Zikrukum points uh, for Juz number 14 by Allah's mercy, inshallah, the last few rukus. Review and self assessment points. Okay, I hope that everyone has their notebooks and Alhamdulillah, I hope that inshallah ta'ala everyone is listing these points and uh, assessing oneself for where one stands in regards to these statements, these questions, these ayats. Inshallah ta'ala, let's look at point number one. Do I believe that all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation shows humbleness to Allah Almighty? That everything on this earth, in this universe, is humbled in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does exactly how Allah has programmed it to be done, inshallah ta'ala. Yes, I believe that. No, to some extent, to a great extent. We look at point number two. All his creatures fear their Lord and they do what they are commanded. Do I believe that? All of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creature fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear their Lord, their Rabb, and they do as they are commanded. Alhamdulillah, we see in the universe everything is running in its order in a very systematic manner, in a very disciplined manner. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to learn from the universe, to obey Allah's commandments, to be disciplined, to be balanced, inshallah, ameen. Uh, we look at uh, point number three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exalted in might the wise. Do I believe this? He is the mightiest. He's exalted in might and he's wise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand this point. Um, how much of it do I believe? Yes, I believe fully. No, I don't believe to some extent, to a great extent. May Allah help us to always see the truth. Amin. Let's go to point number four. Do I stop myself from any act of disobedience in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Actually, it's a gift when we fear Allah, when we love Allah, and when we rely on Allah. Here we are being asked, do I stop myself from any act of disobedience? Sometimes when I want to do something that is not according to the rules of Islam, according to the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I stop myself and not do the wrong deed. Do I stop myself from any act of disobedience in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, no, to some extent, to a great extent. We look at point number five. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, he could have guided all of us. Do we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have guided all of us to the straight path? Yes, no, to some extent, to a great extent. As we know, we are in this world as being tested. We are being tested in this world. Everything that we do, we have a choice to do or not to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that choice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always make the right choices in our lives, the choices that take us to Sirat al-Mustaqim. Ameen. Point number six. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the fertilizing winds and has sent down water from the sky. Subhanallah. Do we believe that the winds carry um, pollen? Do the winds carry seeds and uh, nourishment for the plants? Alhamdulillah, do we believe that the winds help in movement of water, rain, which uh, further fertilizes the land? Alhamdulillah, the plants. Do we believe that? And of course, and has sent water down from the sky. Do we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the rains? Yes, no, to some extent, to a great extent. We go on to the next uh, point. 
Iblis, which is Satan, promised to mislead mankind. We believe that he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's going to mislead us. Yes, no, to some extent, to a great extent. Point number eight, Iblis, Satan, has vowed that he will surely make disobedience attractive to those on earth. This is something that uh, Iblis does. This is something that the Satan does, the Shaitan. That is why we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. That we seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Shaitan, who always wants us to do the wrong things. He always wants to do, for us to do shameful things. He makes wrong things attractive to us. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala help us and protect us. Amin. We go to point number nine. Those of you who have done wrong in ignorance, then repent and correct themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. So those of us who have done wrong in ignorance, then we feel sorry about what we have done, we regret what we have done and we correct ourselves. Do we believe that Allah will be forgiving and merciful to us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always help us not to do the wrong things. And if by mistake we do wrong things, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the awareness to repent back to him, to ask for his mercy, to regret what we have done, and to ask Allah for help so that we never do it again. Inshallah, ameen. We go on to point number 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who fear him and those who are doers of good. Alhamdulillah, this is, <clears throat> this is from the ayat in Surah Nahal, Surah number 16, ayat 128, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really, really, you know, he's with those who fear him. They fear him because they don't want his wrath. They don't want to upset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are doers of good. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their supporter? Yes, no, to some extent, to great extent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be better people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to remain on the right path, the correct path, the straight path. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah bless you. May Allah guide you. Ameen. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.